For this one, you need to prepare yourself, batten down the hatches, gird your loins, put on your steel-toed shoes, and pull up your big boy or big girl pants. This one may hurt a little. I want to make one thing abundantly clear, and I do try to say this fairly regularly. I want to help you find the success that you're looking for. It's why I do what I do and why I have the resources that I do. It's the things that I wanted and in retrospect needed when I was starting out and talking to other professional writers, it's the things they wish they would have had. But what comes along with this is I'm going to tell you the truth. Now, I try to be gentle. I work hard, very hard to be kind, but sometimes the writing is just bad. You're not bad, but sometimes your writing is bad. And sometimes you're approaching screenwriting in the wrong way. And this is where I start stepping on toes. And consider your toes stepped on if you've ever asked a question about screenwriting that begins, can I do? And the reason that's a problem is because whether or not you can do it is irrelevant. The right question is, should I do? There's a great scene in Jurassic Park where everyone is having lunch and Ian Malcolm is upset at the lack of humility toward what the scientists have done. And John Hammond is saying, oh, our scientists have done things no one thought possible. To which Ian Malcolm replies, and this is the part I need you to hear. Yeah, yeah, but your scientists were so preoccupied with whether or not they could, they didn't stop to think if they should. And aspiring screenwriters do this all the time. And what's maddening to me is there are a lot of professional writers out there who feed advice meant to be helpful, but it's actually interpreted incorrectly by aspiring writers. And the advice goes something like this. Write whatever you want. Do it however you want. There's no rules, so of course you can do it. Now, in principle, they're right, but practically, they aren't because they're not helping you. What they're saying is, don't worry if you should or not, you can do whatever you want. And they're exactly right if you don't want a career in screenwriting. If you don't want to sell your scripts or get meetings and get hired to write things, then yeah, write whatever you want. Can you format that scene like that? Sure. Can you write the script in Microsoft Word? Absolutely. So can you? Yes, you can. But if you're asking whether or not you can, you're actually asking the way wrong question. Can I do blank does a couple of things that put you in a very bad spot and it will poison your screenwriting trajectory. One, it ignores the audience and their expectations. Now, there are no rules when it comes to screenwriting, but there are conventions and there are expectations. Scripts are supposed to look like scripts. Can there be nuances? Can? Well, yeah, but should there be nuances? When you ask, should I do blank, now you are putting first and foremost the reader who will read your script, and you're writing a script to be read, so it better look and feel like a screenplay, not because it has to, but because you want it to, so as to positively influence the reader. So if modifying the format in some way helps you tell a better story, then yes, you should make that format change, but just because you can doesn't mean you should. Now the other bad spot you are put into when you ask, can I do blank, is because by asking the very question, and this one is way worse than the first one, by the way, you're assuming you have an adequate amount of story and storytelling wisdom, knowledge, and skill to know what the best decision is in the first place. This is what's known as the Dunning-Kruger effect. Back in the late 90s, two guys, Dunning and Kruger, published a study called Unskilled and Unaware of It, how difficulties in recognizing one's own incompetence lead to inflated self-assessments. And it's actually way more interesting of a read than the title implies. And what their study found was that people grossly overestimate how knowledgeable they are at something. And the less they actually know about the something, the more inflated their assumptions are about how much they know. And they think they know a whole lot. And you've seen these people on screenwriting forums. It's the new writer who acts like they know everything about screenwriting and everybody else doesn't because they're all idiots. Yeah, that's Skippy. And when you start asking, can I do blank, you're assuming you have the knowledge to know what actually is the best option. But your knowledge and skill with the tools of story and of storytelling and your wisdom at properly applying those tools is lacking. So you don't even know what you don't know. And it's at this point that you should be asking yourself, should I do blank? Do I have the skill to pull it off? Because it is not conventional or because it goes against expectations. Now, sure, maybe you have the innate ability to pull it off. Maybe you are a diamond in the rough. But most of us, including me, started out in the rough. So let me quickly give you four specific things that you need to be asking if you should and not 
if you could. One, which I've already kind of mentioned, format. If you don't know why things are formatted like they are, if you don't understand what is happening when you format things in specific ways, you probably shouldn't muck with it too much. Can you change the format? Of course you can, but for the story you are writing, should you? But Dan Gilroy did it with Nightcrawler. Aspiring writers always love citing the exceptions. And yeah, Dan Gilroy wrote a script without any scene headings, not a single one. But he'd also been working in the industry for 20 years, and he wrote it for himself to direct. So when it comes to format, can you? Well, yeah, you can, but should you? Two, can you use something besides screenwriting software? Okay, look, there is free software out there. There are affordable paid software programs. You'll even hear people say, you have to have final draft. That's not true. Scripts are sent as PDFs. So as long as you can export a PDF, you're fine. If you want to know which software I recommend or which ones I use, if I need a free one, I use Writers Solo. The main one I use to write scripts in is Fade In, and about a year ago, I started using Arc Studio Pro, it might be two years ago now, I started using Arc Studio Pro for my planning and my first drafts. I've put links below to each of them if you're interested, and I do get a little something if you sign up for Arc Studio Pro using the link below, but the link below does also have a discount with it, so it's a win-win option. Now, can you write a script in something that isn't screenwriting software? Well, sure, but again, there are free options, so why would you? Screenwriting software helps you format easier, and it actually makes the writing faster and easier. So really the question is, should you use something other than screenwriting software to write your scripts? Um, no. Three, can I write a multiple protagonist story? Okay, do multiple protagonist stories exist? Yes. Are they prevalent? No. I actually only know of two that I would say are any good. Love Actually and Crash. And no, Pulp Fiction is not a multiple protagonist story. It's three stories smashed into one movie, and yes, I will fight you. Now, if you're writing a novel, multiple protagonist stories can work better. But writing a novel is a completely different medium than film, and it's very hard to do a multiple protagonist story in film. Can it be done? Well, yes, I just mentioned a couple that actually do it well. But should you be doing it? Mmm... I'm gonna say probably not. And if you are writing something you think is a multiple protagonist story, chances are pretty high that you're not writing a multiple protagonist story. Most people don't even know enough about story to even know if that's what they have. So just do yourself this favor. If you wanna tell a multiple protagonist story, don't write it until you've been paid to write a screenplay that is a single protagonist story. If you do that, you will have learned the skills you need to hopefully pull it off. And then maybe I can add a third movie to my good multiple protagonist movie list. And the last question, which will surprise you a bit, I think, is can I just figure it out on my own? And like everything else on this list, can you? Sure, you can. It'll take you a really long time. You'll have to sort through the chaff. This channel will help you do that. But the real question you have to ask is, should you? I mean, there's so many more resources available to you now than when I started out. YouTube didn't even exist then, neither did the internet as far as that goes. And the only way to learn, to like to really learn, was to go to film school and read the six books that were published and try to find as many screenplays as you could. And there weren't that many if you weren't in LA. But you have options. The question is whether or not you're happy with the results that you're getting right now. If you are, then keep doing what you're doing. If you're not happy with your results, do something different. If you want my help, I have resources linked below. Use what's most helpful. But for most of you, I'd recommend the fast track. That's where you want to be if you need to learn the tools of story and of storytelling. But I have other resources that may fit your needs better. Again, don't ask if you can. Of course you can. But should you? Yeah, you should. If you want to make more progress as a screenwriter over the next 6 to 12 months than you thought possible, you definitely should. Or watch this. Thank you for watching fun buttons and links below. And when you tell a story, it's not about whether or not you can. It's about whether you should. And you should tell a story that matters. See you later.